All right, here we are. We are sitting on track shot chat with one of the legends, one of the onlys, kid number 17, Mr. Ryan Schutte from SRT, the OG Derby family, man. Thanks so much, Ryan, for jumping on and having some fun with us tonight, brother. Thanks, Dixie. Appreciate everything you do, man. So awesome. Awesome. Just awesome to hear from you today. So yeah, I tell you, so, you know, it's one of these things, we're sitting here, we're talking to old veterans of the sport, the new kids coming up in the sport, and we're having fun on both sides of the spectrum. And uh, as we sit here and we look at this, you know, the Shooty family comes from a long time list of demolition derby drivers. And, uh, you know, probably, I mean, if you guys don't know, SRT Racing, uh, that is the Shooty family, 17 strong. What does the 17 stand for, Ryan? I am my father's 17th child. My mom and dad had 17 of us kids, so. And as my wife would tell you, they finally got it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some people joke around and they say Ryan Shooty's the best shooty out there, but you know, I guess, you know, it's just kind of one of those things and maybe your wife's right. Eh, we probably all know better though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so the question is, I was sitting here thinking about this before I jumped on with you. How many of your brothers derbied? Was there was it six of you guys? Uh, you know, I mean, um, four of us were, you know, kind of the mainstays, you know. Um, Russ, Tori, Pat, and myself. Um, but Paul started russ out way back in the 70s um dan i think did one of the original shows and he he derbied a couple of times we called him one day dan because he'd put all of one day into his builds you know and then and just let him run you know um but george ran frank ran joel ran once jody ran i mean uh we got a we got my sister denise into it uh she did a she did a heat i took her out though um yeah i mean a bunch of the nephews obviously you remember you know vicky but danny and gus both ran with us um ah shoot too many of us <laughs> Yeah, pretty hard. And, and ones that I don't even know like probably ran, you know. Um, some of us are just so, smart enough to just do it once and then leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, and then the other ones just keep it going and keep it going. So now, as I said, Monroe, Wisconsin, that is your guys' hometown. That's where you still live. Uh, your parents, you know, all the kids were born and raised right there. Uh, if you guys don't know where Monroe, Wisconsin is, it's right on the southern tip uh, of Wisconsin. It's right alongside the border with uh, with Illinois, basically. And uh, it is one hell of a derby mecca down there. There are a lot of great shows in your guys' hometown area. Yeah, I mean, our our area was was a lot of fun. I mean, Rockford, you know, uh, Pecatonica is 45 minutes away. We're 45 minutes from Madison, you know, Dubuque's an hour away. So we get, uh, you know, all that Western Wisconsin. Um, yeah, we're, we're in a heck of a little hub. I mean, we got some, we got some great shows, uh, great competition. It took me <laughs> a lot of years to get my first win. I know that because there was a lot of great derbiers in our area you know so now you know you sit there and you think about social media and demolition derby and everything like that i mean the srt family i mean i, I gotta say i think you guys were one of the leaders in the first ones in the social media giving demolition derby out there and kind of showing on the computer you know uh and expanding it to uh the, the greater masses uh, yeah, and, and I had no part of that. <laughs> that was that was definitely on the brothers, you know. I mean, um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm 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 like Fred Trapp. I'm not. I'm 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 in I'm in his train of thought. We don't we don't mess with the technology. We like we like kicking it old school, you know. So, I you won't see an MSDF wow. box ever show up in my car. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You did really good following the shadows and having fun with the family and doing awesome stuff like that. You know, um, Ryan, so when did you actually start derbying? Uh, my first year was right here in town at the Green County Fair, 1994. 
So um, it's funny that you yeah. say nineteen ninety four. I mean, I was just uh, uh, just getting ready to to start. I was I was a ninety five er when I started. You know, so you sit there and uh, okay. um, you know think think back to all this stuff. So when you guys started, when you started Derbyan, I mean, it was kick the glass out of that round back wagon and go out there and have fun. <laughs> Tell me, what are your uh, thoughts with the progression of Demolition Derby? Love it and hate it. <laughs> you know, I mean, both ways. But um, let's be honest, Tixie, my first car was a round back wagon, but it was a 79 Buick Century round back wagon. <laughs> 2.8 liters of asphalt melting V6 power, man. Um, yeah, not not exactly uh, the the car you would dream be your dream car. <laughs> yeah, but Sorry. you know what? You went there, you had fun, and you did your thing. <laughs> and of course, the wife just pulled into the garage here. I'll let her. Uh, get the door down so i can hear you a second but no um yeah no i wasn't a, it definitely wasn't a powerhouse but it was a little engine that could and it, it stayed running and i uh um you know i beat one of today's uh one of our local stars jake trickle on him he's um he's on does pretty well he's a two years in a row charity champ up there with the fifers um but in 1994, of course, he wasn't born yet, and I was competing against his dad. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> oh, Hi, honey. Man, that just ages us sometimes. You know, when you sit there and you think about it, these young kids that are coming up in the derby world, how we derbied against their dads and, and uh, how things have just changed. So as, as the times have gone on, you know, you got into – all the, the cradles and all the protectors and all the, you know, pressuring cars in and everything like that. What's your, what's your thoughts on, on that type of build? You know, I really, and I, I'm a carpenter, so I absolutely love the making stuff strong. You know, I want to, I, I love the building aspect of it, but um, as you get older, it, it's, it, it made it hard to, because you can't, flip that switch and when you decide you're gonna you're gonna junk yourself and take somebody with you that necessarily doesn't happen <laughs> um so that aspect of it is hard you know I, I like bending cars i like the carnage you know of a of a softer build now you know i because I, I, we did the you know that the D dps and distributor you know and protectors and tranny braces and all that we did that for a few years you know and it, it got to be such a such a chore and you know you just you couldn't you couldn't just go out and take somebody out you know i mean you know one back in back in the early days you know i mean one good tire shot and and the guy was done and and that doesn't happen anymore i mean you got to work you got to work somebody um you know for for a, a long time and you got to drive them and uh i i thought of your interview with fred trapp um, and I thought back to the first time I ever met Fred Trapp and I hit that dude for an hour and 40 minutes at charity. I hit Fred for an hour and, and I took fifth or sixth place that day. He was the champ. He was the previous year's champ. And I knew, well, I didn't know him, you know, I didn't know any of you Minnesota guys and you guys were coming down to Wisconsin and, and, uh, I'm like, well, who's this Fred Trapp? I don't know. He won last year. And I'm like, well, he must be good. I better hit him. It took me an hour and 40 minutes, and that was everything I had. <laughs> Uh, it's it's so fun when you sit there and you talk about the old history like that and how how you know these veteran drivers are sitting back and looking at it and um, you know you know today's today's derbies we've still got the room for for the black cars that are all pressured in that are five foot cars whatever you yeah. want to call them um, you know there's still the place for them and uh, what's your thoughts on seeing these stocker derbies come back into play here now you know let's say twenty years later all of a sudden we're we're almost like a flashback. 
It, it is, and I, I love it. I mean, I love it that there's room for there's room for both of us, you know, because it's like you say, the young guys they got the ambition to do everything, and um, me as an old guy, I don't have that ambition anymore. Um, but I'll drive with you. You know, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have fun. I'll rub paint. I'll rub paint for an hour with you, you know, but that's, that's the thing. I mean, that talking about that, you know, charity derby that, you know, it was unheard of to have a two hour feature back then. I mean, it was like, you ran for two hours. What did you do? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah. now it's, it's nothing. It's nothing to have them to go that, you know, I mean, you see that every, every show you get the, pro mods and i mean they can just go and go and go and go and it's incredible i mean i i love to watch it i just can't i just can't do it i mean i can't i can't build that i not that i can't i just won't i guess i mean yeah so you know you sit there and we talk about like you know uh you know hour two hour even three hour almost three hour long features um as you sit there as a competitor as a spectator, as you know, somebody who spends their hard-earned money to go watch a show and everything like that, um, you know, do you think that these softer build cars, the less invested cars that these people are are putting on a better show for the general population out there, whether they be watching Track Shot live or in person watching it, you know, paying your hard-earned money to go sit in the grandstands and watch it? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess. From my aspect, I do. I think I think the lesser builds just because of the fact that they bend, and when your front bumpers up to your chest and your frames rubbing on the ground, you know what took that car out. I mean, you ran out of car, and and some of the some of the other builds are like it doesn't look a lot different from when you drove in. And it's like, well, yeah, I blew up my tranny or my, you know, my torque converter went or this went or, you know, I mean, I had a, I had a catastrophic failure, but it doesn't show. But when your rear tires are off the ground because somebody packed you in so, so hard <laughs> to the wall that, you know, your rear tires aren't even touching the ground. It's like, yeah, I know it took him out, you know I mean? And so from a spectator sport, I think, I think they like the increased carnage that comes with a, with a stocker build, you know, but, but as a, as a, as a builder and a guy that loves the chess match, you know, from a, from a, a driver's, X driver or whatever spectator sport. I mean, I love the chess match of it. I love the, I love, I love the politic. You know me, I'll go and talk to Derby to anybody in the pits. And you know, if, if, you know, I, I always, you know, you know, my introduction, I'm Ryan Judy. If you don't hit me, I won't hit anybody, you know? So I love that part of it where, you know, we, <laughs> you know, where, where we can drive around and, and, and trade paint and smile at each other and nod at the officials like, yeah, I'm going to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In an hour, give me an hour. You know, I love that. But to some fans, you know, that gets boring, you know? And I mean, and, and, and unfortunately I do see that the harder you build them, the softer you drive them as, yeah, as no, weird that, as that sounds, that, that's yeah, but that's you know it to be true, that, but that is reality. Yeah, that it is, is real, you know, and I mean, you know, and, and it's because you, you have so much time and energy and money invested in that. It's like, you, you gotta, you know, you almost feel like you gotta get down to the end and, you know, to, you know, and so it changes your, it, you know, you're, you're punching the clock. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're punching in and we're, we're, we're going to work here today, you know? And, and so you got to drive softer, you know, where, where, you know, as well as I do when in the old days, you kind of, you know, it's like, Oh, I, I'm down a tire. I better really, you know, I better really step it up and I better take somebody out. Cause maybe my brother's going to bring it home for us, you know, <laughs> you know? Well, and, and that was know, the talking. Talking good old history, I remember one time you were out there, you did your politics better than anybody else on the track. You had the cleanest car on the track. My politics took me to about 10th place, and uh, your politics were right down to the end. And, and it didn't matter how good you drove and how bad you earned it. Uh, you weren't going to be able to win that show, unfortunately. Yeah, it, I would. I don't know which one you're talking about because there's a couple of them there. <laughs> that was that way, but yeah, you know. <laughs> 
Um, there's, there's also the, you know, the, the little voice inside your head that says, you know, I can't let you win today <laughs> or it might not have been in my window. It might've been just, it just might've been in my helmet hole. I don't know. I'm not sure, but yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't think yeah. you ever said that to yourself, but you had to listen. Uh, yeah, so. no, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I've also been, I've been parked by one. I, I, but I also been parked by one of the best, you know? So, um, God, I don't know what year that was. Oh, five. I don't know. Must have been oh five. I really had a good chance at winning Metal Mayhem. And um, a lot of people know this kid named Bobby Whitaker. And that was uh, the, the first year he ever won. And uh, his dad did me the honor of parking me to get his kid a victory. And I, I mean, I'm honored that I was, I, I happened to be his victim. But boy, I was sure sore about that for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no doubt about it not that, I, so, not that i'm like, a grudge carrier but about... <laughs> yeah you just didn't forget <laughs> exactly <laughs> so talking about some old classic derbies and stuff like that in your guys' neck of the woods what are your thoughts on uh all of a sudden pectonica i mean you know that was the home of the most intense metal mayhems i mean the competition the car counts the 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 after after demolition derby family gatherings what, what's your thoughts on on pectonica coming back and and uh, bringing in a good size show again uh it was uh, you know i went and i watched the feature last year i didn't i didn't make the heats i, I came down for the second day and wasn't an, you know you know well as long as that text guy doesn't come back and start fires it'll be okay there you know um we're looking for taps anybody find that text guy um but as long as that guy doesn't make it back we'll be okay uh <laughs> but what a venue <laughs> i know nothing <laughs> what's that text uh, area one one syllable off i don't know um yeah one one vowel way. let me guess one vowel off i guess <laughs> <laughs> they bought the wrong one vanna flipped the wrong one <laughs> vanna picked me a ladder um but no what a great venue what a great you, you know as well as i do there's that track is awesome there's just something about our little midwest uh northern illinois southern wisconsin clay that packs in gives you a great great track um you know that it, it's a good time I, I i hope i hope he can put it back together and get as good a party as we used to have because damn we used to party and have some fun man no sleep but a lot of fun a lot of hard work down there but um, yeah, no doubt about yeah, it. It's I, really awesome that somebody's stepping up to do something with it. And uh, yeah. know, that's that's UD. Uh, you know, it's Sam Williams and, and UD with the family. They're, they came in, they, they tested the waters last year. Um, and this year it's going to be wild and crazy. Uh, I mean, the Derby's always good there. Like you said, you got the huge covered grandstands. You've got the huge infield. And you got the campground that is that is unlike any other out there. You got the Pectonica River right in the background. Um, I mean, I remember golf carts uh, going in there. I remember, uh, uh, you know, it's just just everything. Just the history of that place is out of this world. And I mean, and that truly is, you know, where I can say that I've been privileged. I mean, we really opened the doors up right there, and and uh, you know, became super good friends right there. And in the the history, in the memories that were made there is out of this world. It's funny you say the memories and golf carts and what. Um, I one of my biggest memories was going up to see Scott Grop. The next the next morning you know trying to get ready for the feature and i needed a carb or i needed something and here was a gator framed out junked in front of his chair <laughs> the gators even got junked i mean i don't know whose it was but somebody was had a rough night you know? <laughs> Yeah, he didn't oh. plate it up enough i guess he didn't he didn't he didn't put his patch plates in the right spot you know so <laughs> <laughs> no. you know one of the best one of the best mayhem stories there was i needed a carburetor from grop i uh made it out of my heat wagon looking awesome and uh i got up on maori's rollback and billy joe looked at me and she goes are you proud with how you drove and i like the whole maori rollback just went silent listening to this woman beat me down and criticize me for driving bad and i'm like 
I got a beautiful wagon going to the feature. I said, what more can I do? And I'll never forget Tom Maury's face. You know, he looked right at her and says, no, go ahead. Keep telling him how bad he is. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> well, that must be a Minnesota women, women thing because, uh, oh, man, what, uh, oh, uh, boy, uh, Chad, Chad Boyd. Chad Boyd. Yep. His yep. wife chewing him out. That, it must be a Minnesota woman thing telling guys that they got to drive harder because Chad's boy looked, wife looked at him and told him, you ain't ever driving like that again. And then he took some beautiful cars and just nosed him. I mean, stood him up like the quick. And it was like, wow, mama says you drive. I guess you listen to mama there, I guess, you know. So, yeah, well, and I guess, Minnesota, you know. We're afraid of the women up here. Yeah, I know. I mean, hey, hey, I'd probably listen to what she had to say, too. So I listen to mine, but that's why I don't let her go to derbies anymore, though. So, or maybe oh, that's her choice. God. I don't know. That's, yeah. that's probably you know, her choice. Um, yeah. You know, one thing that I got to say is, uh, um, you know, Ryan, you, you were up at one of our shows up here. You know, you've always been a person that's given back to the Derby. I mean, you walked away. You couldn't stay to watch the features and all that stuff uh, up in Minnesota. And, uh, you know, you handed me a handful of $100 bills and you said, hey, I want to be part of that $100 handshake. And, uh, you know, given that, giving back to the Derby community and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that's truly kind of been what the Shooty family has been about for many, many years. I mean, from, you know, your brother Tori doing, you know, stepping in and taking over with DI with, you know, Scott Grapp yeah. and Dave Gard, and then Tori kept it going. And then, uh, you know, just doing all kinds of other different things. But I mean, you know, the Shooty family has always had uh, a great response to Demolition Derby. Hey, I even uh, I even brought a few of those Minnesota handshakes to Monroe, Wisconsin the last couple of years. I said, you know what? There's guys out there that don't win, but they earn that handshake. And I, and I tried to pass that on because I thought... Um, you know, and I mean that even goes back to our early, our early shows down here in Monroe, and you know how the old the old ones went. You know, I mean, a heat was a hundred bucks and a feature was five hundred. Well, our gal that came all the way up from Ohio or Kentucky, um, when she saw somebody put on a show, and they might not have, they might have got down to third place. Well, she didn't. She didn't just hand out the two first places. She handed out an extra trophy and an extra hundred bucks to make sure that guy came to the feature and continued to put on a show. And I and I and I honor that. And her name was Ivana, and that was a Calvacada Thrills. They were, you know, long, long standing. I, mean, I think I think that Chester Rotroff, which was her boss or whatever, I think was one of the first guys to ever put on a demolition derby. I mean, I think they are. Um, I think he was one of the pioneers of our sport. Chester was, um, from from what you know. And if you're not a Ohio Kentucky guy, you don't know that name. But Calvacada Thrills was pretty cool. She was a she was quite a unique woman. She would uh, run the derbies and everything else. But the night before, that gal could take a Mustang 50 and drive it on two wheels all the way around a dirt track you know, half mile track all the way around and set it back in the, in the straightaway to put on a, you know, a little thrill show. And it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, that was long before I derby, but I, I can remember having the big eyes going, wow, that's a girl doing that. You know I mean? And, and that was, that's, that's what I love about demolition derby and, and motorsports is that it's the ultimate equalizer. Even girls can drive Danica Patrick. I don't think I'd want to, I don't think I'd want to try to outdrive her. And, and uh, if, if, you watch my niece Vicky hit, you probably ain't going to get any hit any harder by anybody than her, you know? So that it's to the floorboard. It's the skinny pedal all the way. There ain't no, there ain't no break being put on it when you, when you get that. And I, and I love that about demolition derby. It's an equalizer and you know, motorsports is cool that way. Yeah, it is really cool. You know, you sit there, you talk about your niece, Vicky, and stuff like that. Um, you know, unfortunately, we lost both your mom and dad here just not that long ago. And, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of people knew knew George, you know, George Shooty, the father of all you guys. You know, he was Grandpa Shooty to me, and and uh, he was he was the one that gave the girls the biggest hugs and, and made sure all the women were taken care of and smiling and having a good time. And, um, you know, so the whole family truly was a huge part of Demolition Derby. And uh, if you guys see I'm wearing a Shooty, Shooty reunion shirt on, um, 
they put on the family reunion was, I mean, bigger than a town festival. I don't think Monroe's town festival is as big as the, the shooty reunion in the fireworks display that you guys would put on there. Um, granted, I know it's, it's some of your relatives that, that put that show on, but it was absolutely yeah. amazing what you guys did as a family, as a whole. And it is crazy to see the community that you guys are with the shooty last name. And it's it's a blast, and I and I and I love the fact that you know you and Skinny and 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 uh, many others, Micah, have all been out and and all been welcomed into the family and and know that you're part of the family and and you come down and you attend the reunions and you you know give well you probably paid good money for that shirt i'm sure jody didn't give it to you for nothing we know we know the used car salesman in the family you know you <laughs> gonna pay top dollar for that good shirt you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man but I, you know it is a blast and i, I mean that's that, and, and, a lot, and you know a lot of people know my dad because he was the beer man and we were you know us growing up my dad was part of the knights of columbus and they and they sold the beer and the popcorn and and we sold the sodas and and stuff and and that was why i loved tractor pulling and you know the demolition derby and watching the Oak Ridge boys in Alabama and the you know the Mandrell sisters in our in our county fairs is because growing up in a big family we had to earn our way into that fairgrounds and that was the way we did it we sold the popcorn we sold the pop and and you know and and that's how I love I grew to love the sport was watching it you know selling the beer and and in the popcorn at the in the stands and and uh that was our only way to get in there you know was to earn our way in you know mom and dad weren't dad wasn't george wasn't given men you know handfuls of he wasn't given hundred dollar handshakes let me put it to you that way <laughs> <laughs> wow. you know what he did give was a bag of ginger snaps and a loaf of bread and i'll tell you what there's nothing better than that driving home from your guys's house back to minnesota uh them them ginger cookies never made it past the state line i'll promise see that no they didn't stand a chance man no no they they are they are something else they are something else so yeah and we got a we got a few of the nieces and nephews that are carrying on that tradition making the bread making the cookies and stuff so yeah i mean you remember him as grandpa george there's other there's other of them that remember as grandpa cookie you know so <laughs> yeah no doubt about it so you know it was fun I got, you know i so. got a question I got I got one for you. So was it border battle that uh, TSL was at that you uh, you competed at and you jumped on TSL with us up there on top of Scott Grapp's trailer? Well, what, no, that was uh, King of the Ring. Was that King of the Ring out in Nebraska? Yeah, King of the Ring. Yeah. That's what it was. It was yeah, yeah, it was King no, of the Ring. Yeah. King of the Ring. Yeah. Chad Mark. I made it to the that. feature, but not much more than that. Yeah, no, you got you you got you got used up pretty hard in the in the heat. You had to drive. There was no easy movement there, but uh, that was totally awesome. And and I'm sitting here and I, I I'm thinking back to that. That I mean, that was like four years ago, five years ago, wasn't it, Ryan? Eighteen, six years ago, twenty eighteen, dude. Oh my God! I know. All right, well, got it, flies, I don't it? We, it does. I think we need to have a flashback reunion and get you on TSL one of these shows around here, and uh, it would be a blast to get you up there. And and uh, you know Scott Grapp jumped up there with us, and we had a blast up there with some of the some of the originals, and and uh, it was some great conversation and everything. And the beautiful thing is, folks, if you want to go back and look, it's on YouTube. You can see where the famous Ryan Shooty jumped up and made Skinny and I look good. <laughs> it, it was funny because you know, I mean. It, you know how this algorithms work you know better than anything and and of course if you look at my um you know my you my google feed it's it pretty much shows me the green bay packers <laughs> demolition <laughs> derby or a scantily clad girl i don't know why i don't know why those things are fed to my phone just automatically you know but um i i I'll, one of those seven one of those mysteries of the world but uh yeah it, it was funny because inside demolition derby uh popped up the other day as i was scrolling youtube and and that goes back to i think the original metal mayhem 2002 and that yeah. was it was cool it, it, yeah so i think i think it's inside demolition derby but i think that came up and that was the tv show that we did for i don't know 
that was the first one we bat- before we did the you know before we battled Mopar Express before any of them. But they they came and followed us to Metal Mayhem, and and that was that was that was fun. That was a flashback. Of course, I had to watch it, you know, because I was a lot younger and not so much gray and a little skinnier, maybe. <laughs> well, like I said, this shirt fit me a lot better, you know, four years ago or whatever it was. It's, uh, you know, getting getting a little bit of healthy in my in my older age. Um, but you oh, know, yeah. talking about some of that great stuff like that, you know, it's it, it's just crazy, the flashbacks on it. And you can kind of see that. And, you know, that's that was the stuff back then in the day. That was the only way people got to see any of the behind the scenes stuff or anything like that. So being able to, like, you know, allow you guys to to introduce yourselves to the demolition derby world and let them see the gun safe in the back and see the trophies in the back and stuff like that I oh mean, it's just, like, it's here, really here. I, I, I pan them better here let me let me check here yeah. Is, <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll do a walk through here i'll show you the you got to have the the made for the made for tv ones back in here i don't know i can't hardly see it because my old eyes are getting old but uh those are the made for tv trophies back there all the charlie preen plaques up above and then yeah if you uh if you pan that way that starts about 1994 and then you know goes back through to sorry but had to do it quick uh that goes through to you know just last year i guess like i guess last year i didn't 2022 i didn't run i didn't run 2023 because of what you said with uh my mom, dad, and then of course I lost my father-in-law too. It was a it was a tough, tough twenty twenty three. But we're we're looking forward to a little better twenty twenty four, and um, get I'll get back to Monroe and probably run a heat there at least. And I wanted to I wanted to make it to your show, but that just didn't didn't happen. The ambition level just <laughs> dropped off, you know, but. So what? But what I came up and at least I hear you went and picked yourself up a seventy four somewhere. Well, there again, you know, the barn finds algorithm happened to happen to find me and I'll send you some pics, but it's a true barn find. Um, yeah, that barn find auction site pops up 74 Impala. And of course I clicked on it. And of course the bid wasn't hardly anything. So I got caught up, but it had been, it had been parked since 1988. Um, owned by a little old lady betty williams her and her husband died and the guy had the, the niece and um nephew had to sell some cars and i'll send you a picture it was buried in a little one car garage in lexington kentucky and you know pat lives in louisville an hour away and from he moved up to louisville from florida in the early 90s and then when I got him back into the Demolition Derby in 1995, he's like, oh, there's all kinds of these cars. Well, from from 95 until, I don't know, probably 2010, we picked a lot of cars out of, Louis, out of the Louisville area. And so I knew it was going to be a, you know, a good, clean car, you know, just from history. And um, so, yeah, I bought a 44,000 mile 74, been parked since 88. Um, the kid that helped me load it, he'd been in the family for 20 or 25 years. And he said, he didn't even know there was a car in the garage. It's so buried with, I'll send you the pair. It's so buried with fans and coolers and ladders and, and stuff. You couldn't even see anything until he unburied it and you open the doors and it's clean. Uh, I got it running enough to take it down it, it runs it, it i mean it needs a carb and a probably a distributor and you know I'll, I'll have to get rid of them fiber gears off the timing chain and and then a lot of elbow grease to get some of the skankiness off of that vinyl in there but the interior is nice and you know that that's what i was the wagon i bought wasn't i got a 72 clam but it's kind of gross so mama won't ride in it so well back to that niece vicky talked me out of my buick you know how nice that one was and <laughs> That was a cool cruiser, but Derek, Derek and Vicky talked me out of that one. I kind of regretted selling it, so well, I'm back into a, I'm back into a cruiser again. So we'll make we'll have to we'll have to make a drive. Maybe I'll make it up to one of them clam show revivals or whatever, like you went to a few years back. With uh, they do that every year, don't they? Yeah, it just changes around. This year's going to be down in Kentucky, I believe, actually. 
oh man so i'll have to take her back to kentucky in order to that'd be cool that'd be cool so but yeah 80 it's been parked since it's been parked since 1988 and dude you know them old chevys they just fire up i got the i got the sandpaper in there and i filed the points you know to get her some spark and you know poured enough gas down the throat to choke everybody out in the garage and kill the mice and um but <laughs> she fired man she's back to life so Ah, after well, maybe, after maybe all that time, family, I was we'll jump in the wagon and we'll head south and uh, we'll we'll road cruise with you. And we'll go hit the clam. We'll we'll go get the festival in the in the round backs. No doubt, man, that'd be cool. So, yeah, well, yeah you'll yeah. have to have to hook me. Make sure I know about that because a lot of beautiful cars. When you guys added up, was that two years ago that you had in Minnesota that we? Yeah. Yeah, it's two years ago, and then uh, Rooster came up with his, so we partied with the Rooster family, and then Bolio, and it was really fun to have some people travel up and have a good time. So I mean, it's a it's a great thing. So you guys take a look out there if you uh, you're hearing us talk about it on here. Take a look. It's a clam fest. Figure out it's a GM wagon uh, 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 gathering, and and I, I believe it's in Kentucky. There, no, no, no. Hang on a second. It was in Kentucky this year. Swanson's got it coming up, I believe. And that's where is he then? Back, that's in your backyard. Shoot, I think he's just south of you a little ways in Illinois. Oh, cool, cool. Well, yeah. I I I picked it up from I I don't know. I'm a, I subscribe to that Mister uh, Mister Good Players. Is that Tim? I don't know if you if you were subscribed to him on YouTube, but he's a, a guy out of Kansas, and he go he I don't kind of he's but he was up there filming and. Um, he was doing the walk around. That's how I said, I'm like, Oh, there's Tixie in his wagon. And I thought it was pretty cool. And it's just YouTube's an awesome, awesome thing. I'll give it that, you know? So, but yeah, Mr. Good players on the internet. He's, he's fun to watch. He's always, he's all over Kansas and stuff picking, but he, he, I know he, I know he's competing against some of us derby guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they do sometimes. You know, that's awesome. Well, I tell you what, Ryan, I could sit here and talk all night with you, man. Old history, old stories, fun, uh, the new stuff. I tell you what, I am not going to give up. I want you back on TSL to have fun with us at a show. Um, I think that I think that the derby world needs to see you again and have some fun with TSL. Um, I know it was last minute because uh, uh, everything that was going on. I appreciate you jumping on the track shot chat with us. Uh, these things are huge. I love it. I love for everybody to see uh, all across the country. You know, we got some young kids that are coming up that we're going to be chatting with also. But, you know, to talk to some awesome. of the legendary guys, uh, the OG guys and everything like that, we can't thank you enough. And, uh, you know, what the Shooty family's done for Demolition Derby. And, and uh, you know, you, you, you carry that name proud, brother. Hey, and a shout out to you and Bill for what you guys do. Free ninety nine is awesome. It's just right in my price range, and you know, and yeah, <laughs> and I, I absolutely love it that you guys bring us these derbies from all over, and and th th those guys in the Dakotas and and all over in Nevada and California that are running those old, you know, Mercury's. I know Russ loves that. I, I just I can't thank you you enough for bringing you know der derby to track shot and on the internet for free because that's you know it's killer dude so much love to you and bugsy and the, the wife and uh we'll talk soon all right you all take care man thank you so much for everything ryan it was great hey, talking with you one time peace and you know you're half yeah there it is i get it i get it right there you guys you got it from track shot chat ryan shooty the kid 17 we are just having great times fun and it is the life of demolition derby take care man Sweet, brother. Love you, man. Love you, too. Take care, man. Shirtless? Is this a shirtless sure. scene? Okay. Soon. All right, you guys, we talk about uh, destination. Dude, we're in San Francisco. This is wild. This is so wild. I've never been to Southern California. I am seeing it right here. So as we talk about destination derbies, this is truly what it's all about. Take your friends, take your family, and be part of the destination. So what happened was we were so close in Yuba City that we were able to just come on over here and do some sightseeing. 
And uh, this is what we do at Track Shot Live is we do this cool stuff. We're, uh, we're a traveling company. Track Shot Live brought us to Northern California. We're still in Northern California. Oh, I thought I was in the south already. <laughs> Dang it to no, me. We got about eight more hours to go before <laughs> we're in Southern California. But yeah, we're in Northern California, Golden Gate Bridge. Demolition Derby brought us here. And if it wasn't for the fans, the Track Shot Live family, we wouldn't be here. So I'm super stoked to be here. You know what I mean? We'd be able to show my man's where I used to stomp around. So right over our shoulder is Alcatraz Island and right behind Bill is downtown. So we just drove through downtown to get here for this first shot. And then we're gonna do some more filming, uh, get, get a couple more scenes while we're here. Right? Fun.
that easy. <laughs> I just videoed it. I'm gonna send it. <laughs> Everyone had to be mature, be butts and nuts, and then there's Bobby. Ooh. Fucking Bobby. Bobby don't like us. <laughs>